Hi guys, well today we're going to be taking a look at the Gigabyte Z170X Ultra Gaming. So this board is a new release. Uh, the Z170 chipset though has been with us since last August. But this one here and the Z170 Designer made their debut at Computex earlier this month. And as we're going to find out today, this board is packing in some interesting features and it arrives at quite an attractive price point. Z170X Ultra Gaming boasts a subtle but appealing design with sleek matte black characteristics throughout. And for those wanting to liven things up a bit, Gigabyte has equipped this board to use their ambient surround LED system. Now we said this board comes at an attractive price point and it is available to buy in the UK for £139, $160 in the States. And right now, certainly in the UK, there is a cashback promotion uh, currently running, which will ultimately mean, you know, after that cashback, that it will have cost you around £100. So, you know, if you're thinking about perhaps upgrading to uh, Skylake, this board here could be worth popping onto that shortlist. And certainly by the end of our video, we will have uh, kind of got to that to point where we will decide whether this board is a good value for money option. Okay, we're gonna start by having a quick look at the packaging to begin with, guys. And I'll keep this as short as possible as in the previous video, some maggot was whining about how long it was. It was only 40 seconds, but anyway, we'll keep this nice and short and sweet. Uh, so here is the packaging. This is the box that our board arrives in. Uh, obviously, big, strong emphasis here on the gaming. Uh, we've got these features here running along the bottom which kind of differentiate this board from others on the market. And if we just flip this over, We've got uh, a bit more detail on these features, some of the pictures here representing them, uh, some of the stuff that we haven't seen, triple NVMe support, and uh, even more features. So you kind of get the idea that with this board, you know, even though it is coming in at a reasonable price, you're getting a lot of features. So here's the uh, technical specifications, and then we've got the rear I.O. panel. Okay, and inside, first of all, we've got the uh, board in an anti-static bag and inside a tray, so that keeps it nice and protected. And then we've got the bundled accessories. So this uh, consists of the following. We've got the driver CD, and that contains the utilities as well. Now, in the previous video, we had a lot of discussion about this. And uh, simply put, um, everyone has a USB port. Not everyone has an optical drive anymore. And so, you know, it, it makes sense really to uh, provide us with a USB stick instead of a CD. So if Gigabyte are listening, we hope to see that change very soon. So we've got the documentation as well. We've got the uh, installation guide here. That is the multilingual one. We've got the user manual as well. So that is the go-to reference if you've got any problems. We've got the SATA cables. There is four included there. Those are silver. Got a nice door hanger. Keep any intruders out. We've got the uh, cable ties, there's a fabric for cable management, rear I.O. shield, flexible SLI bridge, and then finally we've got that G connector that allows you to uh, kind of get your power, your reset, and things directly onto the motherboard much easier. Okay, so here is our Ultra Gaming. So as you can quite clearly see, this board opts for a distinctly toned down aesthetic with a subtle design. So across the board, we have a matte black PCB, the heat sinks, and a selection of ports. And as you'd rightly guess, Ultra Gaming will therefore coordinate very well with a wide range of components, which are both coloured and monochrome. The only slight downside is that if you do want to take advantage of the ambient LED system, that is locked down to red. So that obviously isn't going to settle very well if you, for example, have chosen to construct a blue themed system. And the other thing to mention is that our board conforms to the ATX form factor, so that will fit inside most mid towers. We're now going to move in for a closer look at the different areas of this board. So let's start at the CPU socket. Of course, being an LGA 1151 board, we have the support there for Intel's sixth generation of Skylake CPUs. So you can use any of the chips from this family but you know since this board is equipped for performance an unlocked chip is probably going to be the obvious choice and as we mentioned in all our LGA 1151 board reviews if you do have a cooler which is designed for the 1150 or the 1155 then that cooler is going to fit onto this board with no problems because the diameters are the same so you don't need to go out there and buy another cooler if you already have one. Now, Ultra Gaming comes with an 8-phase power design, which is digital, and uh, throughout there we have the ultra-durable components and features, such as these 10K black caps for longer life. And covering the MOSFETs, we have this dual heatsink design. Those heatsinks there, they are not joined together with any copper heat pipes, but once again, they do adopt that matte black styling there for the consistent design. And just over towards the back, we have an 8-pin CPU power connector, and Gigabyte include these two CPU fan headers, which are useful if you do have those twin cooling fans, but more 
importantly, one of those fan headers that is really designed for a water pump, which can be modified between voltage calibration and PWM mode. Moving on to the memory area, we of course have allocation for dual channel DDR4. We have a support there for up to 64 gig, up to 3866 MHz, and XMP 2.0 is available too. And you'll notice that these slots are somewhat different to what is usual. In uh, between those slots there, we have these LED strips. These are part of the ambient surround LED, which as you can see also stretches down the outer edge of the board. And when the board has power, they emit a nice warm red glow. And this works quite well if you do have two modules, but if you are occupying all four, those LEDs there they are difficult to see. Now if we move along, we have quite a selection of different storage options. So to begin with, we have the two rows of SATA Express, a single U.2 port, a single M.2 slot, and then the two SATA 36G ports. Now obviously if you aren't using SATA Express, you can make use of those four additional SATA ports. And uh, it's really great to see that we've actually got the U.2 there, as we will be seeing more drives using this standard very soon. And you can actually organize a triple NVMe configuration by using that U.2, the M.2 with a U.2 conversion converter and a PCI Express lane. To do that the only option is the Intel 750 right now and it would cost you a fair whack of cash but it just goes to show what the possibilities are. Now just to the right of the SATA Express we have this port which is labelled THBC so that will work with Gigabyte's Thunderbolt add-in card to give you that functionality. And then just behind all of this we have the driving force behind the entire board. This is the Z170 chip which has this nice matte black heatsink sitting over the top of it. Turning into the PCI Express region we have nicely spaced out slots and that these include the following we have three PCI Express 3.0 X1s and three PCI Express X16s and the modes for each of those X16s are 16, 8 and 4. So if you're planning to use just the one card then that top slot there is the best option to use. But for multi GPU configurations Nvidia SLI and AMD Crossfire are fully supported. And you'll also notice that we have the steel reinforcement on those X16s and actually we have the same protection for the DDR4 slots too. Gigabyte has equipped the PCI Express with a double lock feature so you know combining the reinforcement and those locks we have a much better overall solution. So immediately next to the PCI Express we of course have the audio components. So in this area we have the isolated area with a tracer LED which again is part of that ambient surround LED. We have the metal EMI shielding around the Realtek ALC1150 chip which is a popular choice as it's renowned for offering superb quality. We have the Japanese solid caps and then the gold plated audio jacks. So you know even the audio receives some good support and it isn't compromised on. Okay and lastly we arrive at the rear IO section of Ultra Gaming and this gives us the following connectivity. We have the PS2 keyboard mouse combo port, two USB 2 ports, USB 3.1 type C, USB 3.1 type A, that is the red one, two mini display ports, two USB 3s with a HDMI port, gigabit LAN that is via the Intel i219 controller and below that two USB 3 ports and then those gold plated audio jacks with optical functionality. So a varied selection of ports there and actually quite a large gap above the USB 3.1 ports and that will obviously be covered up by the rear IO shield but we would have liked to seen a few more USB ports making an appearance and one thing that we are really glad about though is that uh, move away from the killer LAN and over to the Intel controller for networking it is a much better solution. Okay so that concludes our look at the Z170X Ultra Gaming. So the Spotlight has really been on X99 for the last three or four weeks so you know not everyone has the cash, the spur cash, the requirements to warrant such a move to the high-end desktop platform and so amid the announcement that Computex this ultra gaming board here uh, was unveiled and it's uh, kind of been good to break away from X99 and check this one out today uh, so what are the highlights for this board well certainly the price is appealing especially when you factor in those current promotions which you're running which is going to save you even more cash uh, but as we've seen there are lots of storage options on this board uh, and so far as the looks it's uh, presenting us with a, a very nice, clean, tidy look. Uh, it also performs very well, it overclocks very well, and not to mention if LEDs are your thing and you're wanting to take part in the current LED revolution, which seems to be hitting every single product that we see nowadays, and then this board certainly has plenty of them, albeit they are red. Uh, so guys, if you are wanting to know how this board compares, how it performs against other Z170 boards now in terms of the performance then head over to the full review which is going to be on the screen and in the description very soon. I mentioned that this board overclocks very well and uh, we managed to actually push our 6700K to 4.7 using just 1.34 volts on the CPU core so that is quite impressive. 
So I hope you enjoyed today's video guys, thanks for taking the time out to watch today. Uh, please hit that like button, uh, that would be appreciated if you could do that for us. I uh, would also appreciate if you can join us and support us through our social media pages, especially Instagram. Uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Take care of yourself and I'll see you guys next week.